All right. So we're doing our problem here. Now, um, what, we've, what we're doing, we, we heated up some copper sulfate and water. And now after heating, you find that there's 3.19 grams of copper sulfate. The water went away. Now, I'm going to give you a breakdown of the three chemicals that are left. This part would not be expected of you. I mean, like we're not going to do this in a lab. But I'm just going to tell you that in that 3.19 grams, you have 1.27 grams of copper. Okay. You have 0.64 grams of sulfur. And you have 1.28 grams of oxygen. So here's what we've got to do. This is kind of how problems will be presented to you. Sometimes they'll be this comp, you know, they'll be kind of like a, a where you got to think about it to figure out. Sometimes they'll be really simple and they'll just give you everything. So it's going to depend on, you know, I guess how well you're able to interpret stuff, whether you can do some of these. Now, uh, to do this, here's all you're going to do. There's the same exact steps as the empirical formula, with one exception. You're going to fit, figure out the mass of water, too. You've got this, you've got 1.27 grams of copper, you've got sulfur, you've got oxygen. You need to have water's mass, too, because you're going to find the ratio of waters to one copper sulfate molecule. <clears throat> so what do I mean by that? I mean, what's the mass of water in the original compound? 1.81. So you can just add down here 1.81 grams of H2O. You figure that out because it's 5.0 grams minus 3.19 grams. You know, and that gives you 1.81 grams. Now, what this truly is kind of means, the way you'd write out a hydrate just for the heck of it, you would write it out. You remember how that sign means multiplication? Yeah. Maybe that little dot. And you'd have H2O, and then you'd have a coefficient for H2O. It'd be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, whatever. That's how many water molecules you'd have per copper sulfate. So all we're going to do now, we've got all these. We're going to convert to moles for all of them, then divide by the smallest value, then figure out what the ratios are. So do that for all of them right now while I'm doing it. Just convert all of them to moles just like an empirical formula problem. It will take a little bit. Yeah, there's only three problems, as I said. It does not take forever. Please leave it. There we go. Is that good? Yep, all in the moles. So you've got to convert all of them from grams to moles. Hopefully by this point, this conversion is just tedious and you know how to do it because it's so simple to you. Which I guess that's that's a good thing if we get to that point. You got to do it for all of them separately. So H2O will be its own thing. Water's uh, eighteen point zero two. All right, so let's get to this point. Now, ideally, you'll have a little bit more room than this. I'm kind of running out of room here. Hang on. All right, so for this uh, value right here, do we have one for copper? What is it? Is it 0.2 or 0.02? So 0 0.02 moles of copper. Stuff cancels. Okay. What about oxygen? For oxygen. Oxygen is oh. eight. Uh, is, we're, out, we're out of order here. What is it? Oxygen. Oh, eight. Oh, eight. Oh, eight. Point oh eight. 
Yeah. All right. Uh, now back to being in order. What's sulfur? Is it 0 0.02 again? And then water is 0 0.1. What is it? Round it up point one. No, wait, no point rounding. Point oh, oh, no rounding? Point oh nine eight. All right, we're going to go with that. As a tip, do not round these until the end. Don't want, If you get point zero nine eight, keep it point zero nine eight. I mean, you know, we'll say cut it off there. But the more exact you are, the, the more whole numbers you'll get, which will make things easier. What is it? Would be 0 .001 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 